my first view of Jupiter and Saturn was through my dad's telescope. And now here I am out there myself in a sense. So it's cool, it's really cool. My name is Michelle Doherty. I'm head of the physics department at Imperial College and I'm a planetary scientist. So planetary scientist sounds really cool and I think it is actually. My team build instruments that fly on spacecraft and those instruments measure the magnetic field. So we've gone to Saturn and we're going to Jupiter and we use the magnetic field measurements to understand what's going on around the planet but also what's going on inside the planet as well. The critical aspect is how are we going to build the instruments to take that data? And that's where the engineers come in. They can't wait to do it. That's what they train to do. They want to be able to do things that people have told them they can't do. We have just delivered the flight instrument for the Jupiter spacecraft. In our, our main focus is Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system. We're going to go into orbit around Ganymede. And what we're planning to do is we're planning to measure electrical currents that are flowing in the ocean and that will tell us how deep the ocean is and what its salt content is. And that's what I lose sleep over. So what we have here are two models, uh, one of the Cassini spacecraft, and then this is a Lego model of the JUICE spacecraft. So on Cassini, we had an 11 meter boom with one of the instruments halfway down the boom and one at the end. And then JUICE, um, our instrument is on this long boom here and that's 10.6 meters in length. If, if we don't have a long boom, we just can't do the science that we want to do. So all of the stuff that you can see in front of me is the flight spare of our instrument that is on the spacecraft to go to Jupiter. So we always build a flight spare. And so this here is the electronics box and that's what essentially tells the instrument what to do. Two of our instruments are in these canisters here and these will be put on the boom of the spacecraft. And so we're just making sure that everything works together um, and we will then uh, keep it ready just in case it's needed. If I was talking to someone who was thinking about doing spacecraft engineering, for example, I would say make sure at school you keep on doing maths and physics so that you have the basic grounding that you need in case you decide you want to go on into engineering. When I get asked how I feel about building something that then goes on to Jupiter or went on to Saturn, I'm in awe that I can be involved in something like this. The best way to describe it is there is a fantastic image of Saturn which was taken by the camera on board Cassini. And you can see the moon that we made a discovery on orbiting in one of the rings. And you can see the Earth. And I'm thinking, and even talking about it now, the hair on my arm stands up on end. You know, you, you build an instrument, orbits around a planet for 13 years, and while it's orbiting, it's taking pictures of that planet, but it will also see the Earth as well. So. It's great. I wouldn't want to do anything else. But I also look at the young kids in the audience when I, when I give outreach talks and I say to them, it's going to take us eight years to get to Jupiter. You're going to be the people who are going to be working the data. Not me, I'll be watching you work it.